So for perception, you actually need typically, you know, initial detection of some form of energy. We'll see later though, once um, development has occurred, once you've wired up the brain to link, you know, uh, sensory detection events, uh, through all these specialized sensory receptors to specific networks in the brain that allow for your perceptual experience, um, people can still retain or have you know, remarkable perceptual experiences, misperceptions sometimes, or um, you know, hallucinations in others, um, you know, in the absence of any kind of sensory detection event. Um, however, once you've sort of wired up you know, these systems, um, our, most of our experiences tend to be, you know, um, there is a detection event, like you look and there's light that strikes your eye, right? Or you, you know, touch something and you depress, you know, uh, specialized receptors that are located in the, in the finger, mechanoreceptors. There's some kind of a detection event that occurs. Um, and then there's also what we refer to as this homuncular organization of sensory input um, and sort of sensory representation in the brain. Um, and that's basically because even though, you know, you can, let's say, uh, see, you know, um, you know or, or detect electromagnetic radiation in the range of what we call visible light, you know, from the very short wavelength, um, you know, uh, portion of, the spe of that, that, that component of the spectrum to the very long wavelength, from what, what will be perceived ultimately as more blue light all the way to, to red or light, um, you can't detect everything sort of equally along that range. Um, so we tend to exaggerate, you know, certain aspects of the input. Um, and, you know, we tend to discount other aspects of that input. So um, this is called a homuncular organization because um, in the somatosensory system, for example, um, which is sensations from the body, you know, you have great deal of representation, a great deal of actual afferent, you know, receptor architecture, lots and lots of neurons, you know, sensory neurons that can respond to touch or injury or temperature, all these things in your hands. And again, this sort of hairless, glabrous skin of your hands uh, and on your face, for example, and far fewer, like on your, you know, torso, on your, you know, the back of your knee and things like that. So when you map the distribution of the receptors and your sort of a perceptual discriminative capacity, your ability to sort of, you know, determine, you know, uh, very fine details, for example, for touch, you know, you're gonna exaggerate the hands and exaggerate the face and have diminished, you know, uh, representation of the rest of the body. So this creates this little figure uh, that's illustrated here, which is called the homunculus, the little person uh, with an exaggerated face and hands. And this represents really how your brain uh, is, you know, selectively uh, detecting and also then perceiving different aspects of your body. And this is true in every sensory systems. There are certain, you know, even within a range of, you know, for example, audition, you can hear a certain range of frequencies, but you're going to discount, you know, uh, fine discriminations at the higher frequency end where everything sounds like a mosquito. Um, and at the lower frequency end, you're going to you know, have far greater discriminative capacity. So you can um, actually detect the pitch changes you know, that are critical for you know, our social interactions and engagement with human speech. Um, so not all types of stimulation or energy are detected equally. Now after detection, right, there has to be information transferred to these networks basically um, in the central nervous system. And this is going to be via those interneurons, you know, and ultimately we're going to get, you know, often behavioral responses or outputs, you know, through motor neurons to respond to specific, you know, sensory inputs. Um, and again, you can have, for example, um, sort of simpler, more reflexive kinds of networks that link the detection of something, you know, um, some energy in your environment to a very stereotyped kind of a response. Like, you know, I injure myself, I pull away, right? Um, or you can have, you know, uh, or and you can have, you know, the distribution of that same, you know, detection, sensory detection event into networks that allow for far more significant perceptual, conscious perceptual experience. Um, and also other cognitive 
uh, kinds of responses, like recall of similar incidents or um, you know, decision making about how to address what just generated that response. Um, far more you know, complex sort of uh, perceptually driven responses uh, as well.